Hello, hello, hello. Um, speak, speaking of free speech, as we very often do, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, basically in order to help the people of Ukraine, Elon Musk deployed a bunch of like Starlink systems and everything out to the country so that people would still be able to use the internet. Uh, however, people were also calling on Musk to take it a little step further and to ban Russia from the Starlink service so that they wouldn't be able to communicate and like, you know, propaganda and all that stuff but in the same breath a lot of russian citizens because russia's got a lot of remote areas also use starlink and elon musk refused elon musk says spacex's starlink won't block russian news sources unless at gunpoint some governments told starlink to block russian uh, media musk said on saturday uh, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk said Saturday that his company won't block access to Russian media sources on its Starlink internet system, despite requests from some governments. Uh, Starlink has been told by some governments, not Ukraine, not Ukraine, uh, to block Russian news sources, Musk wrote on Twitter. Uh, we will not do so unless at gunpoint. And I believe at the end of it, he says, sorry to be a free speech absolutist. Uh, the request to Starlink comes as Russian military forces continue to invade Ukraine and many nations, including the United States, levy harsh economic sanctions, sanctions on Russia in protest. Some tech companies like Google and Microsoft have worked to block Russian media outlets like the state-run RT Network and Sputnik, according to Newsweek. But Musk's statement implied that Starlink would not block individual Russian-based news agencies. Uh, sorry to be a free speech absolutist, he wrote in his statement. And there's the actual tweet itself. Aside from excluding Ukraine, Musk did not state which countries had approached SpaceX's Starlink service to ask for Russian media sources to be blocked. SpaceX's Starlink internet is active in Ukraine and the company, company sent antennas and terminals to the country this week to help restore internet and communications after widespread outages caused by Russia's invasion on February the 24th. Those terminals arrived on Monday. One of the first things that you do during an invasion is you... Destroy communications so that people can't talk to each other because a case of, you know, militaries uh, in order to coordinate themselves, they kind of need to do that, you know, <laughs> so, so that they can, so that they can, you know, play, make battle plans and form up strategies and shit like that. However, one of the biggest problems with that as well is it means that civilians can't, uh, oh, by the way, see if there's ever an invasion, if you stay close to a mobile phone tower, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, expect expect a missile. Uh, but it means that civilians can't communicate with each other, and there's a lot of people that have got family that live in the affected areas, and they want to know, are they okay? Are they safe? Do they need anything? Is there anything I can do? And they're not able to reach them. They're not able to get in touch with them. However, through Starlink, a lot of people are now able to communicate and say, hey, okay, I'm fine, or not able to communicate because, you know, they're fucking dead. That, that too. Uh, so, obviously, there's a lot of pros that come from this. Um, as well, so I think this Elon did a very good thing. I mean, sorry, billionaires can't do good things. I forgot. Um, SpaceX's Starlink system is a satellite mega constellation. They actually lost a fucking bunch of them because of a solar storm not long ago. Uh, designed to provide high speed, low latency broadband internet access to regions all over the world with a focus on remote or under <laughs> underserved areas. I thought that said undeserved. <laughs> it's like, well, well, doesn't deserve the internet. Well, America uh, and France, fuck them. Uh, the company has launched over 2,000 satellites since 2019 to build up the Starlink network. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine last week, Musk has issued statements of support for the Ukrainian people. Hold strong, Ukraine, Musk wrote on Friday. Uh, also on Friday, Musk said uh, SpaceX was shifting its focus to cybersecurity after some Starlink terminals uh, near conflict areas in Ukraine had their signals jammed for hours at a time. He has also warned Starlink users in Ukraine to take safety measures to ensure their use of, their sa of the satellite internet system does not make them a target of Russian forces, because obviously if they detect signals are coming from an area... They might not be able to uh, determine whether or not it's military or civilian. Also, do they even care if it is? You know, that's that's the important question. To to uh, quote that joke that Jim Jeffries told back when Jim Jeffries was good, uh, the one where he visited, I think it was uh, Iraq or Afghanistan, and the military made him wear a blue uh, ballistics vest, and they went, that's so they know that you're a civilian. So the enemy know you're a civilian, so they know not to shoot you. And Jim Jeffrey said, does the enemy give a shit? <laughs> Which is a fucking good point. Ah, I remember when Jim Jeffries was funny. Uh, before 
before he drugged that girl. Anyway, uh, I mean, I'm joking. That was a complete joke. None of those, none of those rumors were confirmed. Uh, Important warning, Starlink is the only non-Russian communication system still working in some parts of Ukraine, so probability of being targeted is high. Please use with caution, uh, Musk wrote on Twitter Thursday. Uh, please use with caution. Uh, correction, an earlier version of the story included a typo that changed the meaning of Elon Musk's statement on free speech. He wrote that he is a free speech absolutist. The story's been updated to correct the error. Okay, now... There's a lot of people that think that free speech absolutism is cringe and terrible and horrible and all that other type of stuff as well. Uh, because uh, why why should we play fair when the enemy keeps breaking all of the fucking rules? You know, why do we have to play by the rule book uh, when the enemy is uh, breaking all the rules and taking our speech away, but we have to respect the enemy's uh, right to freedom of speech? And it's because because if we do the exact same fucking thing, uh, okay, we're no better, it's the moral argument uh, and all that type of stuff, but it also normalises the behaviour. It has to constantly be recognised, and it's one thing that we definitely need to fucking like hold on to, that removing someone's free speech is bad, doesn't matter who it is. For example... You can't just go around in the street and shooting people. Oh, well, what about if it's fucking, like, murderers and rapists and stuff like that? Should we be able to kill murderers and rapists? Well, then you've normalised that type of behaviour. And then all it takes is for the bar to get lowered a little bit. Ah, well, maybe shoplifters now. Or maybe just people that I don't like can get can get shot. That's why. Right. And it's a case of, as soon as you start it, the behaviour becomes normalised. And then we're, you know, it might take a generation or whatever, but then it becomes a point of... We no longer recognise it as a bad thing to do. It's just something that people do. Oh yeah, that horrendous thing of violating human rights. Oh, that's just... That's normal. That's normal now. We've done that for a really long time. What do you mean let people speak? Quit living in the past, man. Quit living in the past where you're... Where you're human rights. <laughs> and all that type of stuff. And yeah, I will admit it gets frustrating sometimes when I'm constantly like having to, you know... Protect, like I'm speaking out in favour of uh, the free speech of people like communists who would very happily take my free speech from me in a second if they could. I mean, they would do a little bit more than that. They would take me behind the fucking chemical shed and put two straight in the back of my head. But still, it, we, we still need to recognise that it is a bad thing to do and to not normalise not normalize it to the point where, oh, this is just a thing you do to people. Right, that's that's obviously my concern now. Everyone's like, what about what about Russian state propaganda? Well, you can counter that with other speech, or <laughs> was it? You can counter bad propaganda with correct and better propaganda. <laughs> that, yeah, see, one thing is the reason I'm not talking about uh, the Ukrainian conflict or anything like that, or all the stuff that's going on. You know, I, commentary channels, a lot of them are having a fucking field day with this shit. But the reason I'm not doing it is because. Like I've I've said this in my Ukraine video is probably the only one I'm going to do it di that directly addresses the war. I'm talking about this because it's free speech based. Is because I I don't know what's real. I don't know who's telling the truth. Maybe Putin maybe Putin's right. Maybe Zelensky's right. Maybe all the stuff that we're getting told here in the West is a lot of fucking bullshit, and we've absolutely no idea. Who's the good guy in the war? I don't know. I'm not making any fucking comment. I'm still going to say that it's it's Ukraine because Russia was the aggressor. But then people's counter to that will be, well, Ukraine put missiles on the border and there was chemical labs and all that type of stuff. Cool, then we'll see. See if it's going to be that fucking complicated but it ends up like fucking Israel-Palestine. Then I'm just not going to talk about it then. Right? I don't care. I don't give a fuck anymore. Right, if this is going to be another complicated fucking pile of shit where each side is giving me their own biased propaganda, then I'm tuning the fuck out. I'm not going to follow it. I don't give a fuck anymore. However, what Elon Musk did is obviously a very good thing, and I agree with him on his point where, yep, if he's going to be a free speech absolutist, if you respect free speech or you want to tell people you care about free speech, that means free speech for absolutely everyone, even the people that you hate. 